So we're all familiar with RESTful APIs, but have you ever wondered if there is any new awesome technology like REST APIs that gives you way much better developer experience and push you forward to be much more productive? Yes, there is, and it's called TRPC. So TRPC is a really nice library and it gives you a really nice developer experience by using the help of TypeScript and Typing System. And in fact, it uses RESTful APIs underneath, but it's gonna give you superpowers when it comes to becoming a and better developer. So whether you're using Node.js or literally any other framework, TRPC is here to rescue. So if you're not familiar with TRPC already, it's a really nice library that allows you to communicate and actually exchange data between like a client and a server in like really easy and simple way. So what TRPC allows you to do is actually you can utilize and actually implement an RPC model between your server and your client. And using of course in utilizing TypeScript, this makes it super good and actually the best or perfect setup for you from like 20 23 and beyond. So instead of using the old RESTful APIs with like links and specifying the endpoints and sending posts and gets, right now what you simply do is actually you go and specify and create a function and you can call that particular function, that same function from the server on the client. So it's gonna give you like a type safe APIs without needing schemas or code generation or documentation. Plus this will improve your developer experience and make you so much more productive. And it has just been around like for like a year, almost two years ago or sort of like a year ago in 2021 and it has got so much attention so many developers teams and companies actually interested in this and actually moved away into using trpc from restful apis so to see the difference between using trpc in one of your projects and using restful apis and actually try to tell whether trpc is actually good for us as developers as an alternative to restful apis or not so i built the same application in here which is an e-commerce shop that is you know you can see products you can click add to cart in here to view them on the card in here and you can see like all the ad you can filter those using categories from this for example women's clothing or jewelry electronics and so on and so forth and it's actually fully working so i got two projects in here one with trpc both obviously on the server implemented and on the client and the second project is actually using restful apis both on the server and on the client using expressjs and react so this first project the trpc reacts in here actually uses trpc and it got in here like a mono repo so if i check my pack json i get workspaces so the only downside or i'm not going to tell it as a downside but a lot of people are not familiar with mono repos is like for trpc projects you need to have both the clients and the server on the same repository in here which means they are on the same projects and they use the mono repo architecture otherwise like the trpc won't be working because like on server in here you need to export the types or the interfaces of the type declarations and reuse them on the clients so you know the client would obviously know and, and like typescript would know exactly know all your types or your inputs or your arguments and so on and so forth so for trpc project i got a one repo and i have the server in here and i have the client on top so for the server in here if you take a look on it uh, it uses some trpc so you need just to do some configuration and initialize the trpc and everything and the most important part in here is the index so this is where you have your router now the good part about trpc is actually provides you with your own router with its own server so you don't need express but obviously if you already using express or if you want to like use express for your application you can integrate trpc into express using a middleware that is provided by a trpc team but anyway so for this one you got like a simple router so this actually that tells the trpc what are the methods or they're better called procedures because this procedure can be called from outside or particularly from the client side in here so it's actually the greeting procedure we've got like public procedure and everything um and this actually declaring a particular method or a procedure and we can call it later on from our client side so it's simply starting here for example we've got a balance in here that oh i want this one to be you know you can imagine this in a restful way because how trpc actually works behind the scenes it actually uses http and restful apis behind the scenes but the good part about this one is you don't have to manage all of those by your own so trpc does it for you behind the scenes and it gives you with this high level api and you can easily use it so there's actually just simply a query so you do public procedure which is just a procedure that we import from our trpc in here which is just like from the object that you initialize so as simple as that you got a public procedure you do a query which is the same thing as a get and this query is obviously going to return like you know callback in here and whatever object you're going to return from this this is actually going to be the response for your query or for your like you know balance procedure in here now on the client side in here on the client project particularly for example we got this react components you can use this however you want whether in react or vanilla javascript or any other framework for react in this case for example got this greeting components and i want to actually get the balance in here so what i do is actually use the trpc i access the balance method and 
and I can do use query. So this will just return to me a balance query, then I can later on use like the data and access whatever data returns. And remember, it's returning the text in here. As clear as in here, if I click on this, it takes me straight into the server and it actually tells me exactly, oh, from where this one is exactly coming. And as clear as in here, now I'm back into the server. So you can clear as in here, it's super tight and it has a really nice typing system and everything is tied together. So the developer experience will be so much easier for you. Now for the use query part in here, which it might be like kind of weird for you. So TRPC behind the scenes, it uses the React query library. So this is actually the library that you use behind the scenes to manage and allow you to do queries, mutations, subscriptions, and so on and so forth. And this is one of the best React libraries that allows you to basically fetch data, cache data, and manipulate it in your front end code. So this is actually basically the same API you do use query and you can access the data, you can have like error, you can do both of stuff. So to go a little bit deeper into this, let's take another example. So for example, here we got the products in here, and this is actually the e-commerce product that I fetch from the database from, from my API database. So how am I doing this using the server, using TRPC, public procedures, and how I'm actually handling or fetching the data on my client side. And also what I'm doing in here is actually filtering. So whenever I click or select a category, the category in here is going to be passed to the products query and it's going to like fetch new products. Now on a server for our product procedure, so we do products on our router, obviously, we do public procedure and we use the input. Now the input in here is going to tell you which input we're going to get into that procedure. Like you can imagine this like a query parameter on the RESTful API or basically just parameters generally in the URLs. And the awesome part about this one is actually you can do input validation right on the fly. So I'm using Zod in here. So as you can see, this Z in here is actually the Zod library. So if I look into this, as you can see, it's actually the Zod library. And if you're not familiar with the Zod library, it allows you to do validation using TypeScript and it makes it super sweet. For example, what I'm telling this, I want to grab an object and the object in here should contain a category and the category in here should be a string. And I'm going to mark this as optional because sometimes I want to just fetch the products without specifying or select any category. So I want to get all the products for all categories and using method chaining. So I chain another method, which is the query method. Now it gives me the R input, which is, you know, the input is going to be passed through into this public procedure. I'm putting an interface and this is actually a really important part. So you need to have your interfaces and TypeScript interfaces to make TreeRPC work the great way. So simply in here, you do just check the input in here. If there is anything, I'm going to go filter the products depending on the category to select which category and simply return the filtered. As you can see, it makes the code look super, super simple. Like you're having a function, you pass in some input, brings this input or brings those arguments, it uses the arguments and it gives you an output. So if I go back to my React application, the client in here, the home, this is actually where I'm going to grab my products. So I do a TRPC, the instance TRPC, I grab products and it tells me exactly what are these. And remember, if you do, for example, this TRPC dot is clear to here, it gives you everything or all the public procedures you have defined on your server. So here on the query, if there are any selected category, so I'm just going to go to the category here, pass in the category, otherwise I'm just going to pass in undefined. And for this one, this is actually for caching. And simply, I'm going to get like errors, I'm going to get data, is loading, is success, everything using the React query, obviously. Now, using the data, I can access the products, which is the objects of a product. So if I click on this one, it takes me straight into this one. This is actually exactly what it takes me, and it knows when I'm returning this on the server itself. So it's just it's just so crazy that you can basically have all this tightness between a client and a server. So in my opinion, this is one of the best developer experience I ever had using TRPC. And this, as soon as like, for example, when we select a category or something, so you see it refetches those, it does send those in a particular way. So you see this is actually what the payload is, and it actually handles everything for you. So the TRPC library handles everything for you from parameters, just putting this together, uh, making it work perfectly, it, it grabs some sort of like a result in here and data, and it knows exactly what are the products in this one, it just handles everything and screws in here, it works using RESTful APIs, but the RESTful APIs implementation, you don't see that everything you see is that's just like a simple public procedure and a higher level API that allows you to become way much more productive. Now, if you compare this to the implementation or the RESTful API implementations with like Express and the same thing, the same clients, which is React in here. So as you can I'm having the same architecture, the mono repo architecture in here. So for example, for this one, let's say I'm, you know, going to compare the products in here. So for the products, as you can see, we are familiar with when you're doing RESTful APIs in Express. So first I have to particularly tell you what is the HTTP method I'm going to use in, which is the get in here. Second, I want to split or actually select the part of the API that's actually going to be called, which is for slash product. And second, I'm going to get callback with request and response and see this one lower level of control over response and request. And you can do that the same thing on the TRPC side using the context and everything. 90% of the times you're not going to need to access this huge object.
effects or both of these and with all the underlying low level methods and, and kind of properties. So for example, here, like the filter category in here, I go into the category, I need to access the query and I make sure to use the body parser in here. So you could parse that all of those using like a middleware and like I get a category, I go ahead and grab my product from the database. I do filter category. So you filter the category like the same way and I just do response.json. Now the server implementation isn't too far away with the TRPC implementation. It's pretty simple as well. But the main part in here is actually the client side implementation and the developer experience. So for example, the homepage in here, which is the client side react, I'm using the same thing as TRPC. So I'm using a react query to have an honest comparison. And what I'm doing in here is actually I'm using the use query as well. So we can have both the same APIs. But even though you use your query, you're going to still need to provide a fetch products function. And this fetch product function goes like you need to have a URL, you need to specify the URL, like, you know, what is the endpoint and everything you need to specify the products and everything every single time for every single like a fetch method you have. So every single time you have a query parameters, you want to send it, you need to use like the search parameter, you need to parse those, you need to send them and you need to like, you know, do like category in here, then next you have the URL to string and you convert all of those into this, then last but least just like return or product response, and you can easily use this fetch products with use query. But for the worst part for this one is like you don't have any information currently in the code that tells you this is actually the right API or not. This is not the right endpoints. This is like the endpoints for getting products or like now for selecting a category, should I just provide a category or should I just provide a C? Like we don't have any clue if this is actually right or wrong. So for developers, they need to jump through documentation. They need to look into documentation or maybe ask a backend senior engineer through Slack. It's just so, so much cumbersome and it makes this super hard. Now for another descriptive example of how TRPC can help you a lot is this sign up kind of page. So let's imagine the user has this sign up or register page. I can create an account. So you put his full name, his email and his password. And you can click like sign up on this one to basically sign up. Now, if we take a look at this, this is actually the React implementation. So there's actually clients when you got on a form in here, we got our handle submit call this handle submit to submit and actually register the user on the server. So for this one, I'm using the register mutation, which is imported from the TRPC. So I'm doing TRPC register use mutation. And this is actually the mutation in here. So if you look in the mutation, if you do register mutation dot mutate, so in here, it tells you exactly what are the variables that you need, like which is a string as well and a password as a string. And the other cool thing in here, for example, you can import and export the same interfaces from the server. So for example, this I register, which is I imported it from the server. So it's curious in here, this is the form in here that is being used right over here and being used like to, you know, be able to like have this one working. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching and we hope you guys loved and enjoyed the TRPC. And yeah, hope you guys go ahead and give it a shot.